In case the last video wasn't enough for you, here's a few more quick tips for working with GDScript. Tip number one, better float comparison. Floating point numbers are prone to tiny inaccuracies that can make them a pain to work with, especially when trying to compare them to one another. We may not care whether or not two numbers differ at the 10th or even 20th decimal place, especially if we didn't originally write any values that small to them, but our code does notice this and it does care, declaring any comparisons as not equal. To help deal with this, Godot offers two functions for comparing floats that takes this into account, is equal approx and is zero approx. As the names imply, is equal approx compares two floating point numbers and determines if they're close enough based on their relative size, meaning that smaller numbers will have tighter tolerances than larger numbers, while is zero approx is a faster form of the former function when you want to know if a number is approximately zero. Use these two functions to help prevent annoying comparison failures. Tip number two, wrapping values. If you have a value you want to cycle through a certain range when modifying it, wrap f for floats and wrap i for integers are the functions for you. These functions will keep your number above the min inclusively and below the max exclusively, wrapping the values around either end of the range as needed. Tip number three, smoother interpolation. Linear interpolation to linear for you? The smooth step function lets you interpolate between two values using an S-curve instead, meaning values will gradually ease away from the from parameter, have the maximum delta in the middle, and gradually ease back into the to parameter. Tip number four, manually throwing errors and warnings. Assertions are a great way to ensure your application is running as intended when debugging, but they also stop the application in its tracks when they fail. If you'd prefer to just be made aware of an undesirable condition without stopping the execution of the application, you can use the push error and push warning functions to throw errors and warnings in both the Godot debugger and the terminal of your application. Tip number five, mapping a value to a range. This last one really just speaks for itself. With the range lerp function, you can easily map a value from one range to another. And that's it for today. Just a few more tips to help you on your Godot journey. I'll link to the documentation for all the functions I've mentioned today in the description.